Oh, man, yeah, that is one topic, the idiot ball. Yeah, I know there's sometimes you have to do some contrivances to get certain plot points across or going, but if you build up a character that's supposed to be competent in something, and then just suddenly, like, oh, I'm caught flat-footed. I'll use Uplift Protocol as an example. Like, there's a point where, you know, Star has to let Michael Brooks, the actual real Michael Brooks, onto Jupiter. And I made sure to uh, note, note the fact, like, let's not give him full access to the ship everywhere. Like, the sensitive parts he won't have access to, because what if Kronos ends up using his DNA for something else, some sort of backdoor thing? That's the reason why a lot of the characters are trying to retrace, you know, some of Kronos' steps with uh, using Michael's setup as a front. Uh, it's just a case of you have to have the good guys and the bad guys counter each other somehow. Like, you know, they, they, they try to be on the ball, but, you know, there will be slip up, slip ups on both sides. That way, it, it does. That way, the the narrative tension does stay somewhat more balanced. It's like the the good guys always have a chance to get get around things. The bad guys always have a chance to get around things. That's how the cabal, the cabal is basically going to be able to use a few little black back doors to get into the human side of Area Fifty One, uh, to make things a, a little bit more. We don't know how this is going to go is even with the uplifted side, you know, they're still sleeper agents. They might not know who they are, really. Because, again, when I looked at that aspect from Babylon 5 with Talia, you know, the sleeper personality, I'm like, hmm, you know what? You can have a generally good character that has something, like, uh, counter to them inside of them, but not of their own volition. That's something that can be done. Uh, it's also the reason why... Um, like Atlan and the, some of the others didn't erase, you know, um, Eddie and, and Arthanon's um, actual memory of what happened in the engine room. And, you know, Eliza's new ability with the dark matter shooting from her eyes and everything. Because they want them to be aware of what's happening. Plus, they still have access to those fake memories so they don't inadvertently, like, flub up. And besides with Eddie's, you know, Demi capability, uh, it's kind of hard to hide secret things from him because he'll, his nose knows he can find the scoop you know, fairly easily, so what started this whole setup with the idiot ball? Well, Kit Sunche from the Herald of Pulp Rev is saying the heroine, or hero I am a strong, powerful warrior, I kick butt everywhere I go, my enemies fear me, I am the best of the best same person, makes stupid mistakes that should get him or her killed in the first five pages almost every science fiction and fantasy book ever yep, that is true, that's the reason why yeah, when I was initially doing you know, the final draft for Uplift Protocol it I didn't th didn't know if Talir would actually be coming back, but then I didn't really attach him uh, to anybody else initially, and I'm thought like, what if he's, you know, Lady Sassandra's brother? Then that way I could bring that character back, and it's like uh, I don't have to make up ten thousand characters to do different various storylines. I mean, I'm gonna have a fair amount of characters, but not all of them are going to play like even tertiary roles. Like some of them are just there in case something comes up and, and it's like, oh, I can tie this character in, like Striker Nix, you know. Initially I made him as like a one-off character to showcase some pirate problems in the prologue book, but then it's like, oh, wait, I can bring him back and you know what? I'm going to make him part of uh, Snake Charmer's future, like, uh, little team there of, of ne'er-do-wells and whatnot. So it's like, okay, there we go. But yeah, the idiot ball, that just means... <laughs> You don't have to make your protagonists drop the ball on purpose. You can have it to where they have an adversary that can get the one up on them for a bit, and then you can come in from a different angle. You, you don't have to make them stupid to have the plot go forward. I mean, I realize that there's a couple books that do this, but I can understand why it's like, uh... It's like, okay, okay, like, I get it, but, you know, I would do this slightly differently. Again, it's it's a personal preferences, but I find that's why it's good for a teamwork setup where 
you have these characters that are specialists in certain things, and then boom, they can cover each other's like more weaker skills because, you know, unlike a Mary Stu or Gary Stu, they don't need a side class to do anything, you know? Again, this is the, the big basic I've taken away with Mary Stu, Marty Stu, you know, and anything like that. Like, because Superman needs his side cast, you know, because it's to, to do a compare and contrast to see how his, you know, genuine goodness reflects off of them and how they change over time. Now, if it's for something to break the fourth wall to kind of, like, poke fun at itself, then, yeah, I can see how that could happen. But, yeah, overall, um, as far as plotting goes, I always try to think of ways how everybody would counter each other, even in just a general sense. Um, like, for for example, Mr. Apple's not always going to be there to, you know, pl play the, like, uh, the old switcheroo. He's done that with a handful of things, but he can't always do that because if he does it too much, the other side will pick up on it. So that's how I limit some of the people, the allies or the enemies that do have kind of more of like an omnipotent aspect to them is it, it, it's a cold war. So right now it's a complete cold, cold war and they're trying to hoodwink each other as much as they can or put in, you know, pitfalls. So yeah, it's like sometimes that's how you have to do it. Yeah, you, you look at the the conflict and kind of do it from a, a the ground level front line like the people that only see part of the battlefield rather than the whole battlefield. But, you know, that's just my two cents. Have a good day everybody.